Hey guys, Lucid, welcome back. We've got another turn here with you. I think it's maybe a couple turns since the last episode. Um, I think this is the way I'm going to start doing all my Dominions games. I mentioned this, but we're going to kind of skip around a little bit at the end um, so that it's not repetitive. Um, I'm still having a ton of fun playing, um, but some of it is a little repetitive. Um, so for those of you who kind of missed the last couple episodes, uh, I've made peace with United Nations Junior. And we have kind of agreed to share Boss and G, though, without agreeing what we were going to share. Um, and I don't think I recorded it, but there were some contested provinces that I was just, like, dive-bombing in at, and I knew he was dive-bombing in. And so we'll have some of those conflicts here. And then we also have a big fight with Boss and G. Um, he has, Boss and G has relocated all of his troops, his mages, his pretender, everybody, to... Uh, of Theris's capital, because uh, he has lost his, and so uh, he he actually ended up patrolling this turn, and we'll get to that. But he he kind of did a last stand, so we did some Firebird summoning, uh, not as much as I need to be. We need to turn that back up. Um, I need to. That's one of the things we'll do as soon as I pull the game up. We'll go make some more uh, of our fire mages that can cast it. Um, so we have a battle here. This is um. One dude, so this is my army that I have moving on top of Othiris's capital. Um, we won't go through all of it, but um, he's teleporting somebody basically to gym bait uh, and potentially to kind of lock me up. And he's almost definitely going to get soul slayed. Oop. Okay. Um, so that's that. We got a Ring of the Warrior. Not bad. Um, didn't even really cause a gym bait, because I killed him so goddamn fast. Um, come down here at the Forgotten Village. This is a, uh, a blood one side. One of the things I've been going back and doing, because I didn't really think about it for a long ass time, was making sure I site search blood, because if I find a blood site, it can't, can't be worth it. Canyon of the Wild Winds. Um, that is a, I think an air two site. Yeah. And then coming down here... Um, we found a f the first gate. So this is, I think there's an event chain that can start from this. I'm not totally sure. But um, anyway, this is going to give us, actually, and I should check and see if it's in range. This is going to give us a 10% discount on all blood spells. This is kind of huge, you, but the, it's not too huge. Uh, you, if you get like a 30% discount, it starts getting really crazy. Uh, and what I need to look is like my three red seconds, like I've got somebody casting it. I forget where it was. Was it here? I need to see, what's the range of this? I think it's actually kind of far. We're going to go back and watch the events in a second. Well, I, I bet you I can cast it from there. Let's just check real quick while I'm thinking about it, because at some point I'm not going to be thinking about it. And then we'll be very sad. Four... Um, okay. Please tell me, shit. Okay, well, whenever we can, we're going to be casting blood spells from here rather than other places. So that's very nice. Um, but we are going to go back in a second. Was it you? Okay, I know I had an idiot closer. Okay. Um, and he actually does not need the blood booster. He should be in range. Okay, so let's go back to the turn. So anyway, we found that, which is pretty good. Um, first gate, um, the Well of Whitewater. This is a Water 1 site. Uh, the Brigand Layer, which causes unrest and lets us get villains, which we don't really care about, so it's actually kind of a bad thing. Um, and then no more sites. I uh, got a bunch of blood slaves. I think we're at around 240 a turn, which is pretty good. We're going to probably get it up to like 400, uh, reasonably quickly. Uh, this actually is kind of hilarious. We got attacked by some horrors here. Uh, this is a side effect of having lifelong protection. Um,
But fortunately, she had gems. I probably need to look to. <clears throat> Eventually, there will be some kind of heart that will kill her. Probably best to put gems on her until that happens, and then um, possibly get her out of the lake and salvage some gear off her. She's probably. By the time you get attacked once, usually the next one comes in. Normally, you die to these. Um, but on assassins, they can you can kind of live a little bit longer sometimes. Um, it's kind of funny battle. So, Faedon has decided to get in on some of the the spoils here. Uh, he comes out of Vulturing, and just looking at this, you're like, okay, I'm gonna get my shit wrecked, and that's exactly what I'm thinking. But I'm like, well, maybe the big giant, nope, because I'm like. You know, these are only size three, so they're not going to trample. The problem is they have shit morale because they're starving. But that doesn't seem to matter. But we hit them with a the Banefire crossbow, so they're taking a little damage. And then they fail a morale check. And then a few of these are decayed from the Banefire crossbow. And then the skeletons hit a couple more. And before you know it, we killed 26 boars with 50 skeletons. Who would have ever guessed that? Which is nice, because this is now our province. And I have a nap with these guys, so it means it's probably going to stay my province for a while. Um, but we, yeah, okay, we bumped into his PD first. We got a little beat up, and then we bumped into him. We took it. Um, I was trying to kill this guy off. We were successful this turn. Um, here we just send in our werewolf. Uh, this is a Buddha. Uh, are running around. Let's see how he has these guys set up. Buddhas are such cool units. Summon Earth Power. Let's see if he's do Earth Elemental. Okay. Okay. That's one way to do it. Normally you skelly spam, but... Earth Elementals work. What I would... I don't know what I would do. Because you kind of want the Earth Elemental... I wonder if you looked at the movement speed. I wonder if you it's better to do... Whichever one is slower, you want to do that first. So you could do like Earth Elemental Skelly Spam or Skelly Spam Earth Elemental. But if you do it right, then they kind of hit at the same time. That would be ideal. We can probably check. Did he... I think he summoned skeletons at the end. Okay, these guys are 14. Skeletons are going to be slower. Skeletons are like 11, I think. Oh, and it's raised it so they're even slower. So you would want to do like raised dead, raised dead, and then, or horde of skeletons, horde of skeletons. Horde of skeletons is going to be a little faster than one of these guys. That's my guess. Um, okay, we bump into a few dudes, and then, whoop, okay, before we stare at the results too long. So, okay, this is the big battle. On my side, we have a large contingent of undead with some crossbows up here, all close to the front, designed to just get a nice big alpha wave in. This is about a thousand undead. You want to know what a thousand undead looks like. Um, we've got shadow seers uh, sprinkled around up here. Um, we've got a reasonably small communion. It used to be better. The idea when we, this army set off, leaving my lands, was that there were going to be four scrotty um, communion slave batteries. Uh, unfortunately... I forgot to script region one of the battles because I scripted mass region instead and figured it wasn't important and they got killed on first PD because uh, they didn't cast mass region and then the region wasn't enough to handle the communion load. So that was a, a lesson learned there. Um, anyway, now uh, we've got some of these as batteries, uh, a fair number actually as batteries or communion slaves, and then we've got... Uh, mostly the, the Shadow Seers are the Communion Masters. We've got an Eagle King to drop uh, turn one Mass Flight. We've got this guy to do Frostfind and Grip of Winter. We've got this guy to do um, Blood Rain. And we've got this Lich to do Wailing Winds. So we're going to be doing a Light Fatigue play. We're going to be doing a Heavy Morale play. And we're going to be doing... Uh, a fair amount of astral sniping, plus a fair amount of buffing. We're going to be doing mass protection uh, with our turkey. Uh, we're going to be doing mass regen, which is going to hit all our mages. Um, 
And I think towards the end we do Fog Warriors, but that will be a little later. Uh, on his side, we have a bunch of Seth Kona guarded. This is really Trollheim in full form. So it's trolls led by a few a few elite elves. And uh, he's got uh, these thugs. Some obviously are more thugged out than others, but this is all he has at this time. Because everything else has been spent as he has just thrown everything into me for the past three or four turns. Come hell or high water, was not willing to take peace after offered only war for him. Um, these are Seth Kona who have died and have twice born, which is a good use for Seth Kona probably. Um, he's got a BNC at the back. Um, and I killed uh, in an assassination his storm staff, or the, his dude holding the storm staff. So one thing we can tell already is that storm is not up right now, which means he does not he did not bring a storm staff to this battle. And what that means is that my turn one mass flight is going to be effective. Even if he gets storm up, it's probably going to be too late. The first salvo of crossbow fire is off. The communion gets set up, and this is going to be important. Let's look at it. Um, communion master. See the arrows coming in. Communion master. Most a lot of these guys are slaves, and then the masters are at front. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like about six times two. So it looks like about 12 slaves, if I had to guess. And the masters are all up here at the front. I'm not sure if these guys are going to join in as choir slaves. I think they will, because he's been trying to do this, this linebacker communion. Communion master, communion master, communion master. Okay, these are masters. Interesting. Chorus master. Wailing Winds comes up. And the skeletons take to the air. We've got dark... Or no, it's already dark, because I guess this is a cave. And here they come. Now, I would do team-colored squares so you can see what's going on, but we have the same color, because we're the same... We're basically Niflheim in different eras, and that's how these things are color-coded. So you won't be able to see. Um... Now, we have mass protection and relief coming out on our side. Our mass protection hasn't hit yet. Howl is out, which is not going to help. I think it was my Howl. And... Temper Flesh. Let's take a look at these communion slaves, because this is what he's going for, is a... Uh, he's getting these guys all buffed up. He It doesn't look like he's gotten enlarged cast, and because he put them in the same square, normally that means you want to do, like, enlarge. Not seeing that. It's very possible these casters have gotten interrupted here. Like, this guy's running, but they're not flying, so they can't... Some of these guys have already failed their morale check. Like, this guy's probably failed. No, he's still going. Thirty morale. How did we get thirty morale? Oh, it's a profit. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell what hap what's happening here without the the squares colored on, but um. You just have to look and see if trolls are dying. Back here, who are my slaves? I think I've already killed most of my slaves. Yeah. Here are my slaves. I think I only had four. So I, I've kind of way over overburdened them. Um, this guy should fire when he's done. Let's see if he does. He's fatigued out, so I'm gonna sit here and watch him. But these guys, their fatigue is creeping up, so it's unfortunate. Back on this side of the map. Hard to tell what's going on. Now we're gonna check back in. Okay. Um, 
So this guy, he's got a vine shield and a flesh eater. Um, and he's zero fatigue. Do, do they have soul vortex up? No, they don't have soul vortex. Now some of these have gear and some of them don't. Like one of them here has already died. They have phoenix pyre. They have invulnerability. So that my skeletons really are going to have a hard time hitting them. Temper Flesh, they have Extra Regen, they have Mist Form, they have Astral Shield, and then the Phoenix Pyre, which are going to be pretty interesting because they also have Rain Vig 7, I don't know, 4, some of them had 7, but I think that might have been the one with the gear. And on my side, we have a Susceptibility to Fire, because we didn't put up Fire Fin because they haven't used Fire Magic before. Um... And we've been doing mass protection. Now, it's not the end of the world because uh, most of fire damage is AP, which means the bonus you get to protection. Okay, there goes the first Phoenix Pyre dude. And he just blew up a shit ton of skeletons around him. Now, on my side, you can see I've got uh, enslaved mines getting fired off. And you can't really tell when and where it's happened, but if I click on some of these, you'll see we're getting... You'll see them blended in with my troops when I get one. Like this one I got. Um, which is one of the better ways to deal with Phoenix Pyre Thugs, actually, is to enslave them. Now the thing is, once I enslave them, is it really worth it for me to gift of reason them? The answer is probably not. They're probably going to be, like, afflicted at least... And then, they're not that great. I mean, they're pretty good. Like, not... I think this one has power of the spheres. Okay, so i just exploded. And... There's now only a few left. You can see they're just killing so many of my skeletons. And because we're flying, we're following them around the battlefield. But they're popping up all, all over the place. And this is that's the other good counter to Phoenix Pirate Thugs, is to be flying. Because you pop up, and as long as you kill them pretty quick, things are kind of okay. It's kind of funny over here. His former friends are now on my side, and they're trying just as hard as they can to kill him. This guy's going to be a little tricky to kill, because, I oh don't know, he doesn't have the vine shield. Kills just a huge amount of chaff. And you can see we just are popping around the battlefield, killing him. Now, this was expensive. These are my guys that are Phoenix Pirate now, going off. The ones that I stole. Um, here's the, here's the battle, the, the, the score. We killed everybody except his god. His frost father survived, which kind of sucks, because he had really good gear. Um, then, uh, on our side, we lost almost all of our undead. We kept a lot of our crossbows, which is nice. Um, all of our, uh, thaumaturgs, basically, they died. Um, I got one Solus. I'm not actually sure who that is. Um, what the fuck? Oh, it's because of the booster. Okay, it was a Thaumaturg we got as a Solus. Not one of the, the Shadow Seers, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so we lost our Chaff our communion slaves, um, some of our shadow seers, but we still have our important casters uh, and our it, like important mages, mostly. Um, so this isn't ideal, but I mean, this was everything he had. And so this is, and this is the last person I'm at war with at the moment. Like, I have peace with everybody else and his big army just died. So now there's gonna be really not much to cost me attrition.
It's a pretty big deal. We killed in total 20 uh, Seth Brenders. And um, that's obviously pretty expensive. We killed an add up to the Silver Order. Three of these BN seeds. Um, six of the Sid Lords, and that's. We killed a bunch of these this turn, not even just here, but other places in the map we'll see in a minute. Um, a Troll Shaman. Um, Tuatha Sorceress, White Mage. Um, now it's possible that some of these had twice born, and so we might see them again, but it's very unlikely that the twice born is tagged to this province. That's possible. Uh, we did not crack the fort. Um, so we're going to bring some more dudes on, but it'll probably be a turn or two before we crack it. Uh, and I really need to get some other dudes inside. I'd, I'd like to have a proper com communion here, but I don't... Th don't think I can. Like, I need at least three mages to... Well, really, I need five of my of these dudes to get off power of the Sepulchre, which I like. But I think that might not be strictly required at this point. I do need to get more gems out, though. So that is something we're going to do. Um, I'll just do that now while I'm thinking about it. Um, sneak you out. How many air gems do we have? Oh, you have gems on you, because I sent somebody out last turn. How thoughtful am I? Um, you know, we probably actually should shift and do some air. Uh, we don't need quite as many pearls, I don't think. That'll probably be okay. Um, the message we got for Othiris was... Uh, we started to destroy the fort walls. The walls are moderately damaged, more times required to break them down. If we look at our seed strength here, it's 215, and this is a 750. So it's probably going to be three turns to pop. Um, in fact, we'll probably pop this one first. Though I don't have quite enough on four. And I wonder if I can... Damn it. How, how, what's the map move to get there? 24? Yeah, we're not going to be able to do it. Okay, just patrol here. This actually might be two turns. I wonder if I have a gate cleaver. Yeah, let's see it. Um, so that sucks. I'm expecting naps to end. The other thing we did was we put up, and I think this might have happened last turn. I was talking about doing it, but uh, I might not have showed you the turn where it actually came up. I got Earthwood, Earthblood Deepwell successfully cast. This was uh, stealing it from Therados. And... Uh, basically, there was a little bit of chatter in the game channel about people now having to kill me. Uh, well, the problem is, is they haven't really sorted this out, though Fadod has kind of made it clear he's going to be able to keep a lot of his stuff. So, it's possible they have made peace, though we'll see. Uh, but it's very possible there is a, uh, a gangbang incoming. Um, but as long as they wait a couple turns, I think we're okay. Got a big army of dryads ready to say hello. We actually probably should split them up some. It's a little dangerous having them all in this, you know, in one spot. <clears throat> one spot. Um, go find homes for these alquils later, but for now we're going to take them off. And I still haven't finished the actual kind of turn part. Okay, we'll Maybe you guys here for now. Um, and this is not a terribly safe place to store. Assassin gear, because he has shown that he likes uh, arrowing my dryads. Okay, we'll finish the turn. So uh, this was the Battle of Nothiris. Um, next up, we... Uh, Okay, so this was an Eagle King and three Shadow Seers coming in to take out um, some PD. And it goes kind of just how it should. <laughs> A 
Luckily, my Go King didn't get poisoned. I guess, oh, we have poison in our bless, though, don't we? Oh, he didn't bless himself. Okay. Um, and then, but next up, we have another battle, which I'm going to click on here, because this is, he had an, I was thinking he would probably move um, his Air Queen in here, and she's pretty fucking hard to kill. She's got a Virtue Armor, so if she gets hit, she gets sent home. She's got a Storm Staff, which gives her pretty phenomenal uh, stats in a Storm. So it's really hard to hit her. And then with mirror image and stuff, it's even harder. If I do hit her, she just goes home. And then really high magic resistance, 26. So it's like, how do you deal with her? Um, what I sent in was this same little squad, right? So a bunch of these idiots uh, who are going to try to soul slayer, but most importantly, just kind of hit her. Unfortunately, they got a shit ton of poison clouds stuck on them. So they actually got some poison damage. And uh, they're doing Twist Fate on each other, and they have luck and stuff on them already. Um, one of them got smacked. Now, they have a lot of gear, so everyone I lose is kind of a big deal. Now, this guy's taking enough poison damage, he's probably going to peace out. And the Lightning Resistance goes on these guys, but not on these. Soul Sleep Fired, and then she took one poison damage and peaced out. So, on one hand, you could say that sucks because I lost two of these guys, and each of them had a kit basically like this. So this is like a 20, 30, 35 gem kit, so I lost like almost 70 gems worth of stuff. But this is a pretty important province. It's got the Cedar Pillar, which is a 30 enchantment bonus. That's actually huge. Um, and it's three gems a turn, and it's a decently high income province, and it is near this the lake so um we are going to build a lab and a temple and then we are three red seconding this to get a fort there asap uh because this is ours um yeah so anyway that's what's going to be going on over there uh and then finally um, we have a battle here where we just bump into some PD, and then the I think the very last thing is uh, Boss and G. Whoops, Boss and G attacks us here with I think this was three Sid Lords. So in the front he's got this guy, which has a Flesh Eater, a Frostbrand, some MR gear, and these are the more standard kits he's been using. But then here you can see he doesn't have. Uh, enough nature gems anymore. To, vine shields are expensive, and he's been kind of getting a shit ton of his dudes killed. So he can't do. You can't keep losing all your guys and keep putting vine shields on. Um. I've got paralyzed coming out. Flight comes out. Okay, he gets actually paralyzed. And paralyzed when you get hit by the spell is a very long duration, like it's 28 or 30 or something, so he's as good as dead. Um, these guys over here are just chopping their way through skeletons, casting Shockwave. Okay, these guys have run out of ammo, so these horse archers now charge in. Uh, and I think he still has Mist Form on, yeah. But with Paralyze, he dies. And now these guys charge over here. And it's getting pretty dicey here. I think he shockwaved one of his own dudes and killed him at the end. Yeah. He took 13 points of shock damage from a shockwave here at the end. That was this guy. So uh, he killed some chaff um, and he had one guy survive, uh, um, but that was very expensive. Cost him two of his remaining thugs. 
Uh, his other thug died, so he's down to one thug, I think. And these are cap or, No, they're not cap only. But, well, he has one. He could potentially get another one this turn. But he's like, he's really down to nothing. Uh, and then coming down here for events, uh, we get death plus two we get a snake ring and some gold and we get some earth gems and then we get a little bit of gold and a little bit of gems uh, we actually got a really good set of events last turn this is not a terribly good set i mean it's obviously not bad but for how many firewords i have this is a pretty bad roll but i can't complain after last turn i got a shit ton of stuff so um okay we catch a scout we catch another scout we catch another scout boston g's using shadow imps um and uh I wonder we get an affliction cured. I wonder if we're getting any of these guys back up and oh nice. Some of these guys are operational. These guys were feeble minded, so they're coming back online. We've got some more to work through here. You can see we've got quite a few. We've got an I got a nice queue of feeble minded dudes. Um and then that's that. So uh what are we going to be doing? Well, um, our earth income with Earthblood Deepwell up is pretty high. It's 47. So, um, I think when I get to probably like 250, uh, I steal this. But when I steal this, I will be far enough ahead, I think, that everybody will stop whatever they're doing and fight me. And like right now, like stealing Earthblood Deepwell already made diplomacy kind of the thing is, is like these for these guys to end their war, they have to sort out who gets what, and it's really hard for them to agree to that. Because like, look, they're raiding all up here. Like, how is that going to be a thing? Like, they all want all this stuff over here, and Fadod. It, it's even more complicated because Fadod has been winning almost all these conflicts. Like, well, I don't know if that's true. That's probably not fair. But they've been winning a lot of them. And they have these angels, which are hard to counter. There's some trading going back and forth, but I think it's been mostly in Fadod's favor. Um, yet, I think Therados has most of the land. Um, so it will be, a, I think, a little hard pill for them to swallow. Um, in terms of like just accepting whatever Therados currently has. Because it's like, I think the momentum is kind of on Fadod. So I think it's... Now, they... I think if I steal uh, riches from beneath, they're going to put this aside and fight me. It's possible that they they end their naps with me. Well, I don't have a nap with Therados, but it's possible that Fadod ends their nap with me before that point, like before he and them make peace. Because he's just like, we got to do something. But I think he's spread too thin for me to even care about that. These guys are mostly blood hunting too. First thing I am gonna do when I go to war with Fadot is start killing all these blood hunters. Um, which we can do pretty effectively. It's going to be the Scrotty Shadow Seer combo, which we've been getting a lot of Scrotty. We probably need to get some more. Um, I've been building a lot of infrastructure. Like this turn, we're doing a temple and a lab here. Um, here, we're claiming the throne. But where else are we doing? We're doing like a lab somewhere over here. I don't even remember. I think we're building about 2,000 in, in infrastructure. So that's like two temples, two labs, something like that. We're not building most of our forts. We're doing forts with three red seconds. Um, and I need to pick where I'm going to do my other. Ideally, I'd, I'd launch it from this one with the first gate, get a nice little discount. Oh, look at this one. 1800 and then it has a site the 1800 is enough to get my attention this would be a potentially a good one too this one has a lot of sites or a lot of gems that would be a good long-term one to lock down but i think in the short run this is probably going to be the next one. So um, let's take you. I forget where I have all of my gear. I think it's, was it over here? 
You can see I've got these guys too that have to do things. I think they need to blood hunt both of them over here. I need to make some more sanguine dousing runs too. I haven't exactly figured out what I'm going to do with all my blood slaves. Uh, I think my next thing is making more blood gear and then I can spam infernal disease. So turning blood slaves into gear, I'm going to continue to probably ford up a little. Though I'm probably going to start turning it down. Fording up is kind of a luxury, which you can do in like a lull like this. Um, the other thing I can start thinking about is a throne victory. Um, because now I have as many thrones as... I'm going to be getting another one, but um, I basically got four. And this next one will be my fifth. And so if I get two more, um, then I'll be I'll be in the money. Does he have five or four? One, two, three, four. He only has four. For some reason, I thought he had five. I thought two more and he would win. Huh. Um. This throne got four to two. But I guess if I if I have five now, so if I'm in the lead for thrones, then I would need like this one. In this one, and I would win. This one I think would be trivial to take. This one would be hard. So I see got a big stack of dudes here. Um, I could also push for this one, but it's got this huge stack here. Got green lions over this way. So I'm not sure. I don't feel like overextending. The thing is, as soon as I start moving on any thrones, these guys are definitely going to attack me and these guys are going to attack me. And like two huge doom stacks coming in from this way, I might be able to deal with it, but I could also start losing forts. And I would rather not lose momentum. And I'd rather like keep building momentum. Because we're reaching, with me putting up all these forts, we're reaching like a tipping point where I can start... Like if you recall, this war with United Nations Junior, he was killing so many commanders a turn. And I need forts to make all these commanders. So I think we're going to start shitting out like Jotun scouts. We're going to start shitting out um, these guys. Undead production is going to go up. We'll take a quick look at the graphs. Uh, provinces, you can see uh, here is when I kind of... This was like very grindy. We were killing all their stuff. And it doesn't look good for me. But like at this point, they were broken. Like I, And that was why it was kind of hard for me to to like show in a graph how the war was going my way. But I like if you had a graph of their resources, which a lot of it is like invested gems because it wasn't always like raw army. It was just like how many gems they had in gear and thugs, like in, in, in inventory, basically, like how much of that stuff they owned or controlled. During this time, it was just it was just diving for them. And at this point is when they broke and we've just been taking this. I think this was when I'm not even sure when, when we made peace, somewhere back around here, but the peace came after they were basically broken. Um, forts were going nuts. I bet the next person is like here. Income going nuts. Other people are having real income issues. Uh, gym income looking pretty damn good. Look how spicy that is. Earthblood Deepwell was this spike right here. Uh, research and flecting up. This is reflecting basically uh, more forts that we have going. Uh, and then Dominion has been just a steady growth. You, It's very rare you see Dominion go like this nuts, this straight up. Because normally what will happen is it goes up and then you like... You you bump into enemy dominion and then it like plateaus for a while until you like win your next war, but this has just been constant growth, and a lot of this is because we're fording up. So not only are we like adding more forts and more temples all the time, 
Uh, but having all those forts and temples is generating a lot of DOM pressure, which is pushing my dominion very, very quickly uh, outside of just the provinces that I have forts and temples in. Uh, my dominion strength now is like 14 or 15. Uh, army size, you can see it was like chop, 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 chop. And then here we're like, we're going a little nuts. Uh, the next player is probably here. This is probably, I bet you the next biggest is probably United Nations Junior, and they're probably like right around here. This will be a funny one to look at at the end. And then Ascension Points, uh, we're going to hop up because we're claiming one this turn. But right now we're tied with United Nations Junior. So that's the score graphs. Um, yeah, all that's really left is to knock through these forts about as quick as I can. I probably should move in these guys. And here, I probably should make a couple Jotun scouts. Um, item management. You can see we're starting to get a lot. We've got a pretty good kit of all of our astral gear. We've got thug kits. We're missing flesh eaters. I need more blood mages. We're just kind of shy on blood mages right now. So I probably need to switch a couple places more to making Scrotty. I just need, I feel like I need a ton of Scrotty coming up because I'm going to want to do more thugging than I've been doing. I've kind of gotten out of the thugging habit. Uh, we're going to be doing more of that. Uh, I'm going to start putting some Hell Swords on Scrotty. Pretty good on Scrotty. We've got the fire resistance, which is nice, but not super important. Um, but it's basically like having... Um, it's expensive, so I need to be careful because it uses fire gems, so I'm not going to do a ton of these, but I'll do a, a few. Because basically it's like a flesh eater and a blood thorn combined into one item, which is two-handed, which means it does a shit ton of damage. Um, and it's also, we'll just we'll go ahead and put it on, I'll just show you what kind of stats it gets. Okay, you were gonna have to blood hunt anyway. Like this would be potentially a kit here. No, you don't need, we don't need any reinvigoration gear actually. So we'd probably do like earth boots or like some of the boots that give additional strength. So he's gonna hit really fucking hard. And then I'm not sure about the miscellaneous, but MR gear is good. The boots would be I'm not sure, because he can quick himself, but um, you can see he hits for 45. Now, if I put like strength boots on, it's going to be even better. So, but the partial life drain, well, I guess it's going to cap. I didn't think about that. So up to five HP of damage will yield a life drain benefit to the attacker. Uh, the life drain, uh, life drain will yield a half HP uh, and two... Uh, fatigue points per HP drained. Okay. So actually, that's not going to be too much. I don't know if we're going to make another one. I was making another one, but I think given how much fire gems it costs, it's not really worth it. So that's what the guy I had making. I think you're going to chill out and do something else. Make a flesh eater. Um, but anyway, nice to have one of those. So yeah, the main thing was I was thinking that... It would be better than the flesh eater combo because you're going to be doing more damage and getting more life steal. Like in this case, we're only getting the life steal from a 24 damage attack. But then if we look at like, where did I put this idiot? God, I really got to go through and did I take it off? Uh, versus I got 45 damage attack. I did not realize that the partial life drain is capped at 5. So that sucks. That was why I went and built one. So once I figured out that's not the case, we're not going to build anymore. Um, but that said, this is a shit ton of damage. Like That will cut lots of thugs in half. If he's flying, that'll cut you know, angels in half. The other thing, too, which is an argument for this, why I was thinking it would be cool, the other, th the other reason it's not cool is to use fire gems. So it was going to be worth it to have a, like one or two or three of these. 
um, if like if it the life drain basically stacked proper like well with having high strength. Uh, because it doesn't, it's not really worth spending the fire gems. The fire gems make the opportunity cost very high for this. Um, otherwise, you know, it would be more cool. But the other thing that's kind of cool is his link two. It goes up to link three because he's a size four dude. So we'll be getting repel checks. And then he's berserk plus three. So his attack, once he's quickened and uh, all of that jazz, uh, his attack is going to jump up to a highly respectable... Uh, 23 i believe once he's quickened and berserked um and that will be i mean that that's pretty fearsome so he's going to be getting a lot of repel checks because a lot of weapons aren't linked three um so anyway it was kind of cool i think it was a good idea and it's not horrible like i'm glad to have the item and it's probably better than the flesh eater life drain combo, but it's just too expensive. I'd rather do just blood sleeves. So anyway, that's that. Go ahead and change you back and have you start blood hunting. Well, we'll have you make a sanguine dousing rod, then you can blood hunt. Um, so I'm gonna have to go through, click on all my forts and see where I've got scrotty that aren't blood hunting. Cause we'll have to get them properly deployed. Oh shit, we need to get, I don't. Maybe I put these guys in Yominam. Have these guys start making a pilgrimage. Well, let's leave one of you. Well, no, somebody's gonna pop out this turn. Here, and then there, and then they can go up. Um. Why are you researching? You should be blood hunting. But anyway, um, so we're going to go through. There's not too much to do this turn. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's fighting everybody. He's kind of winning. And this can be a shit ton of these angels. You know, the other option that I have... Now, this is the thing. If I go attack these guys, it's a guaranteed these guys are going to end their nap with me. I think I have to attack them. On one hand, I was like, I'm almost a little more long-term worried about, about these guys. Because if he starts doing like five of these angels a turn, that could be real problems. I mean, we have enough astral, I think, where we can kind of deal with it. But, it, you know, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Um... And ultimately, he's going to need armies to take forts. And I can probably design one of these guys to kill angels. Though it will be tricky, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so we'll go and finish the turn. But basically, it's going to be going around clicking here, making sure... Well, there's a few things. I need to make sure... We're, this place is pooping out Eagle Kings. Here, we are going to be getting... I think I want to switch over and get some more of these guys. And we're going to send them. Well, actually, I have enough here. I don't want to add more there. What I want to do is, I think, in all the other caps, like Nazmore, I think you, we're going to start doing an, uh, a Firebird colony here. And we'll add some of you in here. So is that, oh, I have to pick, oh, we picked it. It's going to be this one. So we need to actually cast our thing. Uh, okay, I should have a ring of the Magi somewhere. A ring of wizardry, robe of the Magi, okay. That's my ring of sorcery, my ring of wizardry. Better not have lost it. Okay, we were using it for sight searching. <laughs> I think that is one of the things I kind of feel like it's worth min-maxing a little bit. It's just 
wherever you can trying to get that uh, that site searching going with uh, like using boosters and stuff like including really high powered boosters like these um, here okay Now the other thing I need to think about doing is we're going to move two people here so they can next turn lab and temple it. Hmm. I know his god's in here too. I could try to assassinate him. But then I might ruin the gear, and I would kind of like to get the gear. Come on. Yes, okay, we can we can move some of these idiots. Okay, they're gonna move here and then they may be able from here to move there. I think they can, okay. So we're gonna train them in. They'll probably <laughs> These guys will probably be there in time to storm. But this area, you can see, like, my military is very much depleted over here. Like, this was expensive. Um, I mean, we have this, but... And I, I'm sure I'm projecting force on this side, but over here, I'm not projecting a lot of force. I need to get... What I might just want to do is take all of these guys, if I can, and move this production like down to here I think that will help how many people are coming here some of the really old ones that's fine I think we're gonna do that we're I could min max it and take all these things off I may do that after if I'm feeling particularly Okay, I'm going going to probably do this, but I'm not going to do it here with you. Um, what that also means is I can take these guys with them. Okay. You have to click this first, and then you click on them. Okay. So I'll go through and take all the amulets off and put them on other people while we get... But we're going to basically take this whole production facility and move it down a little closer to where the action is happening. Um... And I've got more micro to do with getting uh, getting these scouts in the right place uh, with their little undead patrollers uh, and making sure I have Scotty coming out. And the other micro thing I'm kind of doing is going through and checking which provinces have I not blood hunted. I mean, not uh, searched for blood and then kind of going through and where I can. Like we're getting a Scotty here, so I have to remember to search here you're making a sanguine dousing run you actually need to blood hunt i mean not blood hunt site search for blood and we can site search for water for i don't think there can be water for in a random province like it's probably only under the water but uh anyway we'll do it so we're site searching water and blood there but that's the kind of like little micro things that i think it pays off to do even into the late game like this um like this we have to site search for blood so I might actually just switch this and build a Scrotty here. Uh, but if we like look at all these forts, like here I haven't site search for blood. Oh wait, now that's oh okay. Yeah, here I haven't. Oh, that's Max Verney, so no point site searching. Here I haven't, and I've got dudes. So do I have another blood thorn somewhere? So what I what I'll actually do too, and this is like the little tedious micro is I'll come through and I'll find, because like when I, blood thorns, I will, um, 
I'll move Bloodthorns to Bloodhunters when I'm not using them. But then sometimes I'll lose track of where they are. So then I have to like come through and search like who has a Bloodthorn? Because you being at one higher in blood, you're going to Bloodhunt a little bit better. And it's significant enough where you kind of do want to do it. You know, it's probably going to be like when you factor in the increased chance of finding slaves and then the fact you get a little bit more, it's probably like three or four more blood slaves a turn. Which that's probably worth like the mouse clicks. Okay, there's another one. Here's somebody. So we'll take this off. We'll put you back on blood. This guy was doing it last turn. Wait, you're doing it here. He's doing it here. Okay, this is where we need to do it. I oh, know we've done it here. Oi, 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 oi. So many forts and provinces to manage. Okay, this was it. So we'll do that. I guess we're not gonna we're not gonna sweat the fact that we're not water fort. We haven't site searched water here at all either, so we might find something. The other way to kind of look at site searching is like my land, it's definitely worth site searching. So like when I look at this, it's like, oh, there's a lot of stuff I haven't site searched. Well, the thing is, is like all the things that are mine, I've site searched the shit out of. But some of these, like I don't even, like I just know. Like this is not, was not originally my province. Because of that, there's a good chance somebody else site searched it. But like this one, eh, it's kind of on the fringe. It was contested. I probably should invest more in site searching it. But like these that were like core to some other nation, Chances, it's not going to show what I've site searched, like you can see. I mean, it's not going to show what they site search. It'll only show what I do, but you usually don't find things when you site search other people's stuff. I don't know if I've really talked about that explicitly before, but it's pretty important. Okay, let's make some more sanguine dousing rods here. And, uh,. Yeah, we're doing a pretty good job site searching. This one actually need to actually we'll do that. We'll take this guy, put his hat back on him, send him here to site search. Um Anyway, I'll go through and do the rest of it, but uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope y'all are enjoying the series, um, and uh, I will see you at some point in the future. It probably won't be next turn. It will probably the next turn we probably do will be as the next war breaks out because I feel like it's going to be just grindy grinding through getting the rest of these boss and G forts uh, until the next war starts. So I will see you guys then. Peace.